Astro no That's 1973. funny you say that. I remember hearing that over a decade ago. I don't really place it where. I remember hearing what you just said. Great question. Leo, what's your intel right. on, on, on the fact that the Pope went to there and didn't criticize their half a million political dissidents in jail, but came here and criticized our presence? How could they criticize? Fidel Castro was brought up by the Jesuits, uh, and his brother was even more brought up by the Jesuits because he went to the, to the Jesuits uh, since elementary school. I mean, we're talking here about people who were educated by the Jesuits for their agenda. So, of course, they knew what was about to happen. Good uh, question, Dion. It's unbelievable. And again, we're not saying it's Catholic and, folks. And plus, it's plus, Castro is a 33-degree Freemason, and uh, this is not known. Also, Che Guevara, they think that he uh, was the great, great rebel, which probably he was in, in his head. But they are all 33 degree Freemasons. The Freemasons, Freemasonry has never been persecuted in Cuba during the conflict. Well, I've read Che Guevara's book, and he calls uh, Indians, natives, brown people, subhuman, idiots, uh, morons, mentally retarded. And complains that Latin America could take over, but the people are too stupid. And that's that, that, a that's not true. B it's very racist. People don't understand that Che Guevara was a super hyper elitist racist pig. And I see and brown skinned Mesoamericans wearing Che Guevara shirts. I want to slap them upside the head. Sorry, go ahead. Well, now you're going to see this pope becoming the leader of all South America because South America is full of liberation theology and of communists. And they're all gathering together with the Pope Francis in this new world order setup. So, I mean, we don't really stand a chance when Obama himself said that he will bypass Congress for Agenda 2030. Well said. Another quick question. Uh, let's talk to uh, Nick in Pennsylvania. Go ahead. You're on the air. Alex, hi. How you doing? Good, brother. Go ahead. Okay, I have a really important question for Leo. First, I want to say, last time I talked to you, Alex, your uncle was sick. Uh, it was Christmas time. I want to say, God bless you, my friend. I'm sorry to hear that you lost him. Sorry, too. Thanks for your support. Um, what was um, the, the question, question, brother? I have for, the question I have for Leo is, um, I did listen to the Pope today in Washington. I heard the whole broadcast. Actually, I myself am Catholic, and there's some things about this Pope I actually disagree with. Now, this Pope... Stay Pope there. Stay there, Nick. I'm going to come back to you. Then Jeff, Mickey, and Jim, I want to hear what you disagree with him on. I don't think the guy's a Catholic. I mean, he doesn't sound like anybody else I know that was... I mean, he sounds like a Che Guevara or something. We'll be right back. We've never seen such enthusiastic promotion of the Pope. There's always underhanded snipes and attacks on Catholics. And that's because clearly it wasn't something the globalists totally controlled. Now they love it because they got control of it. Nick and PA, go ahead. Thanks for holding your own with Leo Zagami. You were uh, getting into, you're a Catholic, and you heard some things you didn't agree with. Go ahead. Absolutely. And also, I'm a Philadelphia resident. I'm hoping I can get through to your show on Sunday, because he's due here in Philly on Saturday and Sunday. But this is my question for you, Leo. Um, when I listened to the Pope today, um, he talked about immigration and people coming into America. And then he brought up the golden rule. And to me, by doing that, it's like he's trying to put a guilt trip yeah. on America. On America, he's trying to put a guilt trip on our country that we have to bring in these illegals or we're bad guys. So this is my question to you. I'm really passionate because I'm a patriot like Al. Oh, yeah, we've I'm been more open than anybody. We've given more free stuff, and then we get blamed for not doing enough. That's wrong. Absolutely, and I'm just tired of seeing the American people getting trashed, and we are every day. But this is my question to you, Leo. Will this pope take 10,000 of our illegals into his country? Well, uh, this is what happens also in Italy. Here, uh, he pulled up uh, the same stunt, uh, and in the end, uh, he ended up guesting basically, I think, uh, six or eight people inside the Vatican, saying he was guesting a couple of families, giving the example. And that's it, basically, because, you know, uh, he wanted to uh, make us feel like we have to guess them in our houses, you know. So everybody now in every region of uh, Europe has to prepare to uh, uh, give their everything to these immigrants, to these refugees who are arriving. This is, of course, a technique that he's using both in Europe and in the U.S., and it seems like he's working, and it's going to be very difficult to stop him when we have these fake conservatives like the Republicans who are not really doing anything to stop him.
Because, I mean, when you hear the comments of uh, Shepard Smith or people like this, really, I mean, I put my hands in the oh, head. Oh, that's what's sick. I appreciate your call, Nick. Great point. We're going to do five more minutes in the next segment uh, with Mr. Zagami. Then we're going to have a huge in-depth report on geoengineering. It's out in the open. You need to know about it. We have a special guest joining us. Uh, let's go ahead and take another call. Let's talk to Jim in Colorado. Jim, you're on the air with Leo Zagami. Yeah, hi, Alex. Uh, long time listener. I'd just like to add a few uh, pieces to this final puzzle that we're uh, looking at, staring us right in the face. Uh, this pope is number 266. Two sixes plus another six. Uh, chapter 13 of the book of Revelation, it talks about a a beast with uh, ten horns, seven heads. Uh, Freemasonry has seven different types of lodges, and they have a uh, they they have their own set of ten commandments that are in direct opposition to God's ten commandments. Uh, the second beast says it comes out uh, has two horns like a lamb. That those two horns represent the mitre that the Pope and bishops wear, okay? You, you there? No, I'm listening. Well, oh, okay. That, that represents that, uh, that hat that the Pope and bishops wear. So this Pope is, is the last Pope. He, he's uh, the false prophet, second beast. And uh, what the whole game, their whole game plan is, is to do away with Christianity Worldwide, they these masons and these secret societies, these devil worshippers, they all hate Jesus and they want to get him off the face of the earth. And uh, if you uh, if you look in uh, John chapter six about the uh, what we call as the Catholics, the Holy Communion, the Mass, they're going to try to they're going to do away with it. And that's talked about in uh, Daniel chapter twelve how. They're, they're, they're All right, listen, uh, interesting points. We're going to get Leo, Leo's take. Well, we got one more segment with Leo Zagami. Then we've got uh, the organization in California exposing geoengineering joining us. It's made news across the state as more and more citizens investigate persistent jet condensation trails known as chemtrails, which we're not saying every plane is spraying chemtrails, but there is geoengineering going on. We've compiled a lot of evidence we're going to be going over today, so stay with us. Uh, Leo, you just heard that caller uh, getting into, you know, this pope being the, you know, being the false prophet or whatever. This is all I know. Suddenly, Baptist churches, Methodist churches, Catholic churches, uh, universities, media, the heat's been turned up. We're going to ban the name father and mother, boy and girl, he, she, the words. We're going to arrest you if you read out of the Bible. We're going to forcibly inoculate you. We're going to turn your power plants off. We're going to teach your five-year-olds how to have sex. We're going to, I mean, they are really, it's not just the Catholic Church. It's what I'm saying. It's everything is uncloaking right now and really showing who they are. It looks like a major move is being made. I want to jam in a few more calls, but what do you say to what I just stated? I think you're perfectly on the ball game because, I mean, here we are right at a critical moment of time. They are taking completely over. They feel secure for what they're doing. They feel that the opposition will not be able to stop them. They have the technology, remember, now to implement the new world order. All that technology that we've been talking about for many years now is uh, available. And, of course, uh, the mondialist plan wants uh, to connect uh, the human being and uh, enslave him even more. So uh, this agenda, in the end, wants just to enslave and, and make every human not only into a number, but into a number that uh, is then valued uh, for the system. And, you know, this number is valued 100. This uh, uh, human being is valued 200. I mean, it's going to be like this. It's, it's a, a whole situation in which they are just exploiting mankind to enslave him ultimately, even uh, with uh, the microchip in the end. Leo Zagami is our guest, jamming in a few final calls before we get into geoengineering special with a special guest. And in regard to the Jesuits, we have to remember the figure of Pierre Teilhard de Cardin, who was this French Jesuit who inspired very much the, the New Age movement. And he was a strong supporter of the one world government. And let's not forget that. 
Well, we had the Pope two months ago and again a month ago saying we need a planetary government to tackle climate change with a carbon tax. That's world government with a tax, tracking everything we do. That is the one world cashless society with the Pope calling for it. I mean, if anybody who was a Christian leader called for it, I, I would say they were bad. I mean, if, um, you know, who's the top Protestant today? Who would you say that is? I mean, I don't care who it is. If, if they said that, I'd come out against them. If, um, if we don't do something about it, I just don't even know what's going to end up happening because people think, oh, big deal, there's going to be a world government. With that world government comes total tyranny. And what if they were setting up world government right now and they were being you know, promoting freedom? I'd still be worried because a centralized system can take over at any moment and mistakes by a centralized system can be magnified. But we know the globalists are bad through and through. We know they have nothing but the end of free will for us. I don't see how anyone, Leo, would not oppose this. Well, uh, mankind, unfortunately, has many weaknesses. They uh, collect these weaknesses and make them the, the way to exploit mankind. You see everything that we are fed through the media, uh, everything that we are given to eat, uh, everything is exploited so that in the end we are like, okay, this is my little piece of the cake. I might stay silent because otherwise I might get in trouble. So this is going to become more and more in the next uh, few years. I mean, in the end, we will not be able to say anything that opposes the system and even have a feel against them, not even saying it. They will uh, control even our thoughts. And they'll so have all the these little factions people. set against each other that will attack each other whenever the centralized referees want. I've only got time to go to two more calls for you because we've got another special guest coming up, maybe three or four. Let's try it. Real quick questions here. Thanks for calling. Jeff in Canada. Jeff, you're on the air with our guest. Go ahead. Good afternoon, gentlemen. God bless you both. Uh, my question is uh, if either of you have heard of a book by uh, Tom Horn and Chris Putnam called Petrus Romanus, The Final Pope is Here, and it's about the prophecy of St. Malachi uh, and the final pope. Uh, they also did a follow-up book called Exo Vaticana, Petrus Romanus, Project Lucifer, and the Vatican's Astonishing Plan for the Arrival of an Alien Savior. And so basically it documents uh, that they, uh, they call it astrotheology. And, uh, uh, sure, the Illuminati believe we were seated by aliens. The movie Prometheus, uh, Prometheus is basically like a creation story uh, that the elite put out. They even admit that. Uh, and they even admit that the Vatican is preparing with the Vatican uh, Observatory for the arrival of aliens. That's mainstream news. Uh, excellent questions. Thank you, Jeff. Let's get uh, Mr. Zagami's take on it. Well, the Jesuits are in complete control of the astronomical sector of the Vatican. Uh, the, the Holy See has uh, had the, the Jesuits in charge for a long time. So they are the ones that in the last few years are starting to open up to this possibility because gradually they can make the whole thing also instrumental for their own New Age creed. You know, Jesus is not the only one in the universe. In the end, Jesus will be, okay, Jesus is big for us, but he's not big for the, instead of being the center of the universe, he's going to become marginalized and a part of this New Age creed that the Jesuits are promoting using also the alien agenda. And, and again, we're not the ones saying this. This is mainstream news. It's just so bizarre. Are they going to stage something? Do they know that the globalists are going to stage something? Uh, what is the plan? You see Hollywood getting us ready for it? It is bizarre. Let's go ahead now and talk to Aaron in Canada. You're on the air with Leo Zagami. Uh, hey, yeah, I was just saying uh, or going you know, to talk about the formation of the Catholic Church and how in the beginning it was formed... Uh like Caesar worship, and uh, you had to take Caesar's name before Jesus' name. So I think since the beginning of the Catholic Church, it's always been a part of the Illuminati. It's always been part of uh, the... Yeah, we're going to have to move on. Then that creates the whole conspiracy theory that we were cutting that line off. That, that sounded like that was being done on purpose. That was like chainsaws going off and yeah, ca yeah, yeah, car yeah. doors opening. And... Weird, Alex. Uh, anyways, uh, I mean, let's talk about the founding of the Catholic Church. Um, that's an interesting question. It's the founding of Christianity. The founding of Christianity because we know that at one point an emperor, Constantine, made this the state religion of the empire. 
And, uh, and from there on, uh, really, the Vatican takes on from the Roman Empire as their heirs to all this power and 